Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. Although it has been confirmed for the winds of winter, The Witcher Season 3 introduces a fantasy aspect that Game of Thrones might have utilized but chose not to. Both The Witcher and Game of Thrones are high fantasy TV shows based on book series with violent and complicated political settings. However, as Season 3 has shown, there are also significant distinctions between the two. In contrast to Game of Thrones, The Witcher Season 3 mostly succeeds in terms of its fantasy elements, despite certain plot flaws. The lead into The Witcher Season, 3 ending in particular does this, running the gamut from large-scale magical battles, including fire magic and astonishing feats with lightning, to Ciri being transported to the desert location of Korath and having a series of visions. It's the latter especially where there's a stark contrast to Game of Thrones, allowing for a clear comparison in how the two approach the fantasy genre. The Witcher doesn't always beat Game of Thrones, but this is one area where it does show its advantages. Ciri meets a unicorn in the desert in The Witcher Season 3, which acts as something of a guide for her as she navigates the next part of her journey, which includes coming to terms with her past, and setting upon a new path for the future. Ciri's choice in using fire magic to save the unicorn or little horse is instrumental in her then choosing to leave her powers behind. And the creature will likely be important again in the Witcher season four or beyond. In the books, the unicorn, Euaraquax, is a key part of Ciri's story and an enemy of the wild hunt the unicorn especially with it being so tied to magic and Ciri's hero's journey, is one of the most pure high fantasy moments in The Witcher Season 3. Bringing in an iconic mythical creature, but it's something Game of Thrones avoided. Like the world of The Witcher, unicorns are believed to exist in Game of Thrones universe, but never appeared in the show. It's not just specific to unicorns, though. The HBO show often eschewed its more overtly fantasy elements. Yes, it included a lot of dragons, because they look cool and allow for incredible spectacle. It also featured White Walkers, too, but left the most interesting and most fantasy-tinged questions about them unanswered. The Durwolves hardly featured, most the Stark's warging was cut. The show never really bothered to explain the Three-Eyed Raven's powers, Prophecies are trimmed right down, ancient and powerful objects, such as the Horn of Winter, the Dragon Horn, and Glass Candles, aren't used and all the magic is, well, not so magical. Game of Thrones initially succeeded in blending its fantasy story with its political landscape and family drama. There's a reason the Lord of the Rings meets the Sopranos descriptions were so apt, but increasingly moved away from the former, almost seeming embarrassed by it, in a way The Witcher does not. Ultimately, this use of fantasy is a boon for The Witcher. It not only allows the series to create an incredible world, but crucially it serves an emotional, narrative, and thematic purpose for advancing series story. With Henry Cavill leaving The Witcher, there'll be an even greater onus on Freya Allen's Siri even with Geralt sticking around, as Liam Hemsworth taking over, because she's set up to become the main character focus, and thus connecting with her story more deeply, as the unicorn and her desert visions allow, is vital. And the kind of thing Game of Thrones ought to have done with, say, the Starks and their direwolves. Game of Thrones may not have had unicorns, but George R. R. Martin's sixth book in the A Song of Ice and Fire series the winds of winter will do. That's not just a prediction or something that's been teased, but comes straight from the unicorn's mouth, with Martin teasing them on an episode of Neil deGrasse Tyson's Star Talk. The author said, I have an interesting take on unicorns coming up in the new books. Unicorns have been mentioned already in A Song of Ice and Fire, though even in Westeros, they aren't commonly found creatures, but mostly through dreams including one of Jon Snow's. The unicorns here are shaggy and more goat-like than typical ones, 
which could well factor into Martin's take. Although there have been brief descriptions, the next book is likely to properly introduce them thanks to Rick and Stark's The Winds of Winter story. Unlike Game of Thrones, Rickon is believed to be on the island of Skagos, which is home to all manner of things, including cannibals and, yes, unicorns. In the books, Davos Seaworth is headed to Skagos to find Rickon and bring him back home on behalf of Wyman Manderley, Lord of White Harbor, who will pledge his allegiance to Stannis Barathean in return. The majority of Rickon's story was altered by Game of Thrones, another instance of veering away from potentially including fantasy elements. Nonetheless, the Winds of Winter's story will proceed significantly differently. Although it won't be an identical replica of the unicorn from The Witcher, it will be an intriguing contrast with its own special perspective that will further enhance the mythical setting.